fair people here then, right? All right. So everybody's pretty familiar with the steaming process and what what that's all about. No. Steaming next up. <laughs> okay. So I hear you about it. <laughs> okay. Uh, that might might be a hard time to, to teach the whole the whole process, but uh, so what we're going to go over today is just how to take this off with, with dry heat. Yeah. Um, should we get started? Is this sure? Okay. Um, so I think it was about 2011. I was new to the New York City area, and uh, I've been Lutheran since '93, and uh, I was basically trying to make an impression and so I took on a custom built guitar for Nexus set which is like any of you guys know like it's you never know what you're getting into with the indie builder. You know Martin's you can have a pretty good idea of what you're gonna get into every time. Gibson's a little bit more. But uh, so this guitar looked like a Martin. Um, looked really well built and I, was, I just kind of assumed that it was a dovetail and it was a uh, Pretty, pretty standard construction. So, 15 hours later, uh, oh after applying steam to it and getting the neck to move, to come undone just enough to where there was no going back, um, I was in basically pretty desperate, desperate straits. It wasn't coming off. And at the 15th hour, I had the fingerboard completely off of the guitar to lay eyes on the neck joint. And some of you are passing it around. Uh, basically what I did at that point was I drilled two holes to accept uh, two soldering pencils with two copper rods on it. And then it, it came right off. And I discovered that it was in fact a dovetail, but it was uh, glued on with what I'm guessing was JB weld. So, <laughs> yeah, it was a light blue adhesive. And there was no, there was no chance that steam was ever going to get that hot enough to release. And uh, so this was kind of the, the start of... Uh, kind of an aha moment, which is that in some cases, especially everybody's encountered the Martin white glue from the, from the 60s and 70s, that stuff doesn't particularly like steam either. It'll release just because the dovetails are so, you know, crappily manufactured that they're, they're just willing to release anyway. But really the steam will swell the joint before it, before it releases the joint. And so it got me to thinking, and I uh, got on the internet and started looking up, uh, I'd worked at Reed Love Guitar Company before and I knew a thing or two about cartridge heaters and I was wondering, if somebody made a cartridge heater that was, was small enough to not make a huge hole in a, in a guitar fingerboard. And that led me to this unit right here. This is from Temco. This is an eighth inch cartridge heater. This one uh, exploded in my hand. I'll send this one around the other direction. So Temco sells these guys. Temco sells these uh, these heaters, and uh, their stock heater will actually make 1,400 degrees, which I thought was a little bit too hot. I used the Elm or was using the Elm my blanket controller, and the thermocoupler. I don't know if anybody's ever used these, but sometimes these will get loose, and the blanket, this will actually just send 100% voltage to it, and it'll burn up the blanket and burn up whatever you're working on at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I had them custom make one for me that was dialed back. I think that one will only go up to about 400 degrees. And I want to say those cost around 140 bucks to be made. Uh, the first neck I pulled with that was, I, I think it was a 60s triple O and it came off, it was high glue and it came off in probably about 15 minutes and clean up, essentially what it does is it turns the, the neck joint into a glue pot. And so when the neck finally releases, clean up is basically just turning the guitar upside down and letting the glue, the glue run out of it. And at that point, I walked around the block and I laughed for probably about an hour. I was just laughing. Um, but it was easy. And the thing about it was, is it was it was set it and forget about it. Like I could actually multitask while I was taking the, the neck off because it was just making the heat. I came back 15 minutes later, no arm burns on the uh, espresso maker, no, 
you know, steam going everywhere, and I like holding the guitar at weird angles to try to get the steam to go into a part that wasn't wasn't let it go, and it just it just let the joint go, like, and and pretty quickly too. Uh, so I got a guy in, in uh, my neighborhood named Alex Glasser, and I called him up. I, I needed to share it with somebody, and he was like like the closest guitar repair guy around. Alex, in addition to working for Santa Cruz Guitar Company, also worked for Frank Ford out at, uh, everybody knows Frank Ford. So Frank thought it was an interesting idea, but was unwilling to uh, accept the eighth inch hole. Uh, it's a big hole, so that's the first thing to know about this. Eighth inch, you're not gonna cover that with you know, any, any 80 by fret wire. You're gonna have to figure out a way to cover that hole. I've never had a problem with it. Uh, I'll be, you know, after we get done, I can show some of my techniques for, for disguising the hole. Um, but Frank, uh, Frank decided that he was interested in the idea, but he wanted to make it smaller. And so he got onto the McMaster car catalog and came up with this item, which is 16th inch stainless steel tube, uh, some insulation, and some very small uh, nickel chromium wire. And basically this works. You uh, put the uh, wire in there, have a little wrap around that comes back and make sure you return the, uh, the length of the, uh, the tube. And then you put you know, your positive on one end, your negative on the other. I use this successfully with a uh, variable DC power supply and was able to dial in, or, you know, essentially because it's smaller and I wasn't going up to, I like to go a little under 300 degrees. Uh, I used two of these and it worked pretty well. The drawback with these is they're really, really fragile. And with the heat and the size and everything, you get about maybe two uses out of these before they just kind of, they just kind of die. I think maybe, there's probably 10, 10, 11 dollars in one of these. So, but like if I had a really valuable guitar that I, would, I, I didn't want to like try to hide off a hole underneath the, the fret, I would probably build one of these up for, for that. So most of, most of my stuff is going to be D1220s from the 60s and I could care less about a, an 8 inch hole under the, uh, under the fret. So, so this one. <coughs> Um, so Alex, of course, is you know connected with Frank and connected with some of the guys at Stu Mac, and I got to talking to Dan about uh, this. And Dan, you love the uh, you love the procedure, right? Yep. And uh, started as you were. Yeah, it it was really like you know taking necks off is you know. The steam works, I'm not gonna lie, I've, I've steamed a lot of necks off. But where the steam kind of falls apart, I don't know, how many people here charge extra for taking a Gibson neck off, or an Epiphone <laughs> neck off, with, with a wide heel? You know that the dovetail goes down, you know, like about yay far, and then you've got all that cheap glued heel, like, past the dovetail. How, how is steam ever gonna penetrate that? And so with this, with this apparatus, you're actually able to go down past the, the dovetail a little bit and get heat attacking attacking that area. Um, so in in those situations, I mean I've pulled guild necks that should, you know, that I swear have taken me, you know, five, six hours to pull before and it's straight up twenty minutes ago. And that basically takes, you know, what was you know, taking your life into your own hands with the next set or taking your shop's you know, financial uh, stability into, into your own hands and when turns it into... When you're drilling in there, are you really like drilling down into the joint short, so to speak, to get, to get penetration? Or? So, on, on this guitar, this is, a, this is a 60s D1220, and so there's a, there's a healthy gap between the mortise and tenon on, on the dovetail. And so what I'm doing is I'm hitting that, I'm hitting that gap on there. So this is another thing to think about too. Is is in the in the as you get older in Martins, that gap starts to shrink. And I don't know if any of you have ever pulled like a '30s Martin, where there's virtually no gap between the uh, mortise and tenon, but it's almost impossible to get steam going throughout that joint as well. And this is probably, you know, 
I've had those I've had those guitars take five six hours to pull too without cracking the heel or without flushing the finish, and you're just you know trying to be ginger the entire time. So um, that's kind of that's kind of the upside. The the downside is the size of the hole, and if the size of the hole, like if you if I was going to do a '30s Martin, I'd probably build up a, I'd probably build up one of those guys. Um, so that's. That's it in a nutshell. The uh, um, this heater I use with the LMI blanket controller. I don't know if any of you guys have this. So I don't know if you know this, but if you if you set and you hold the uh, set button, or if you hold the set button, eventually you get this funny little symbol right here. This becomes percentage of, of voltage. So when you dial this up and down, that's like one percent of the hundred. <coughs> So you are actually independent of the thermocouple at that point. You don't have to use the thermocoupler. So that's something to think about. And that's how I that's how I use that on blankets and everything. Now I don't use the thermocoupler to set the temperature on, on the blankets or anything anymore. And you test the temperature with a surface thermometer or anything? I do. I have written on here 28%. That's what I like on, on this guy. Um, that makes just a little bit under 300 degrees uh, at the probe exposed. I have no idea what's going on with the probe in, inside the guitar, but it's probably you know south of that by, by a fudge. So um, yeah, should we pull pull a neck off? Oh, so Dan, you want to introduce the the Stumac device? No, you can. Okay. So. Dan started, uh, what, what, what would you say that you uh, you uh, told me about this or sent me this? Or three months ago. Three months ago, something like that. So three months ago, Dan uh, and the guys at Stumac came up with this apparatus. Let's start this. And Dan sent me, uh, very nicely sent me this, this, whole, this whole outfit and I got to work with this. Um, so I won't be going back to the cartridge heaters anytime soon. This has a little bit of a downsize. I got this ordered with the hook in it, so you can actually manipulate it in, some, in and out of the guitar pretty easily, you know, something like that. But these wires get they get funky. This is not the, the stiffest wire in the in the history of the world, and so this one actually blew up in my hand. The wires the wires got bare inside the insulation. And this actually shorted and, and blew up my hand, which wasn't wasn't super groovy. Um, and uh, this this hook is nice and everything, but this is just you know this is quite a bit more easy to manipulate. So I think it's pretty hot too. So any questions? How long did it normally take? So I expect this will probably be ready to go in about in about 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. I'm in front of a lot of people right now, so it's probably not going to come off at all. <laughs> um, but I, I usually I usually budget 15 to 20 minutes. Um, so outside of would be prepping. Be making sure the finish didn't crack and doing all the other stuff that goes with it. Exactly. Um, so since I switched to this technique, zero blush finish. And there's there's Martins out there. Everybody's probably encountered the you know the Martins that even just a little bit of moisture will will blush the finish. You know everybody's experienced Martins where you know I had one one of the last ones I steamed I had I had zero finish issues I came back the next day and I I introduced enough uh, moisture into the end grain to where some some of the finish had actually chipped off even though I thought I'd gotten away with you know what looked like a pretty pretty good pull so I, I can't stress enough like zero zero issues since I've I've switched to this technique and in the past when you did that did you did you end up having to refinish the guitar yourself, or did you warn the customer ahead of time that this might happen? And if it does, well, I mean, 
some some people, you know, it depends on the guitar. Like like everybody warns, you know, a Gibson neck reset that the that the uh, heel is actually finished over. You'll warn the customer that there's probably going to be tension at all. Somehow, it's, you're just not going to cut that finish without having, you know, at least a chip or you know something. You know, something will happen. Um, you know, I mean. Guitar repair customers, how many of them are, are willing to hear that you know you may damage the finish in the process? Not many. Not many are gonna go, oh okay, you're the guy I want doing this because you just said you're gonna you're gonna have an accident and prepare yourself for that. So <laughs> uh, but you know, it happens. It happens. Like you're you know, every you know, like I would go through, I'd steam like ten necks off and have them go great and I would be okay on I'm done with having problems with this. Clearly, I've had 10 in a row, right? And then the 11th one is the one where it's, you know, something goes wrong. And it can, you know, it can go wrong just because they're old guitars and it's old finish. And, you know. Are these uh, fretboards usually glued to the top too, or? Yeah, so this one I've, I've pre-released the fingerboard extension on. And how do you do that? What's that uh, so I, this one I used, uh, I, Used aluminum foil and I used a light to uh, to apply heat to it and then power knives and all that kind of stuff, which is pretty. I'm sorry, coated with. It. Uh, it's a what an infrared like you know heat lamp okay. kind of light, so 250 watts and going down. Have you done it with the Yamaha in that joint? I haven't. Is that a dovetail or? It's a dovetail, but it's. I mean, I've only seen one undone. Yeah. Yeah, long time, a lot of wiggling. They're, 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 they're really kind of destroying the guitar. Yeah, they're they're, 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 they're done. They're done with like a. Don't they have dowels too? Aren't they like dovetail, dovetail and dowels and something like that? I think that's like. <coughs> so I have an, a whole another next week resetting procedure for those that I use an oscillating software. <laughs> um, I call it the kung fu neck reset. Uh, any other questions? Anybody want to come up here and take a look at this this stuff? I will. I'm ready to jump. You have a pretty good. Um, you have a pretty good shot of knowing what Martin's and, and Gilds and Gibsons and all that. All the, all the known manufacturers. Can you use this attachment without the digital yeah, so on the solder gun? Where's the, where's the other one? I use the, uh, you know, for light demonstration. Sure, yeah. Sure. Yeah. And, uh, Not through this. Right, right, of course. Yeah. Because it's the measure. Stop. Yeah. Yeah, your number's like 20. All right, yeah. So this is sunk, this is sunk oh, yeah, down in there. Dan uh, says it works in this guy. It works in a couple different manufacturers of soldering pencil. Like this, this guy, the original one. Like I had to thread this in, and and get this in here. So every soldering pencil is different. Mm -hmm. He says that you say you can get this into a weller if you drill the. If you have to bore a hole in the end and slide it over the element that's down inside. But that's not a cartridge either. That's just a, that's just a that's copper. Just a, yeah, it's a copper rod. I mean, a copper rod turned to the. So they're only really selling you this. Yeah. They're not selling you this whole setup. Right? They can sell you this. So no, this is can. this is a this is a soldering equipment that is available on the Stu Mac website. So, yeah, so it would just be we'll making sure that ceramic heater. No. Yeah, because we looked at that. Oh, okay, so it's but you don't have to cut the joint at all. Just no. Where's Brian Gallup when you need him? You wrestle that neck off him. And how do you know really where these drilling points are? Uh, so this is this is by experience. This is going to be like this on, on just about every mark. Gibsons are a little bit different. You have the ability for the you know for the void to be like a little bit north. Of the, uh, yeah, interesting. Um, so that's just going to be experience. Um, but this is this is a reliable spot on, on Martin's from this era. Wouldn't be difficult either. You can even find. Has anybody found a, a Gibson where they topped over the dovetail? You guys gotten into the heard about them? Yeah, that's. 
topped over it when you like, put a piece of veneer over top of it? No, the, the top is just actually over the dovetail. I don't know. Oh, if they okay. set the neck and then glue the top on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's probably um, like a retop of the factory or something. Yeah. Oh, you only find it out now? Yep. The, the good news is it's, it's actually pretty comfy. And, and it'll, it'll release, but uh, boy. Yeah, that was a, the first one. How close do you get with the heat lamp over the... I'm probably like, I'm probably like right about there. Yeah. Maybe a little higher. I don't like to. I don't like to cook the boards. I don't like to see any of the oil coming coming out of the boards. Like when I'm pulling frets and heating frets, I don't like to see any oil coming out. Like any any of the oils coming out just means that you're drying the board and you have you'll have a hard time getting the frets back in. And that goes for fingerboard extensions too. Like they're hard enough to press the fingerboard extension as it is. If you have like crispy crispy rosewood up there, it's it's even harder. How long do you leave the the light on for? Mm, probably it depends. Like white glue can be pretty challenging. High glue can be pretty challenging too because it doesn't, you know, necessarily want to release without moisture. So you, if you're just using dry heat, that can actually take quite a bit of time with high glue. So and then it's just masked the same way as the bridge re glue. Yeah, like. yeah. I actually go and I get a <coughs> dollar store next to us, and I go and I get, uh, you know, they got the the aluminum pans for you know like. Those whole aluminum pans for mm -hmm. catering or whatever. I'll get the lids from those and then just make like an etching of the fingerboard and then cut it out. And that's that's what I use. And maybe what like 40, 45 minutes? It can, yeah, it can take 45 minutes to get a fingerboard extension to release. Right? You know, you definitely don't want to rush it. If you get if you get your knife into the run out and uh, you know you, you have any run out issues, it can get it can get really nasty. Just like on any other you know like a bridge plate removal or a bridge removal, it can. Yeah, you can get nasty. Right. Yeah. Usually, what I do is I, I <coughs> cut a cardboard template and then I put the foil over that just to have a little bit yeah. of a cushion yeah. in now. No, it's not. And then just because the foil will get hot no. too, and oh, yeah. so I worry about that damage on the top. Yeah. Right? yeah. Use like an infrared light. I do, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's yeah. a and with aluminum reflector. But Yep, Home Depot, yeah. Home Depot 250 watt infrared. Yeah. I use blankets for a long time. I used all my blankets, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I want to say I burned up my fingerboard extension one with the same thing I was talking about, like the thermocoupler slipped out from underneath of it. I had, a, I had a bunch of issues with the blankets, and I just went back to lights here recently because they're expensive to replace. And the light bulbs. Blankets are hundred dollars a pop. They're a hundred dollars a pop. It's expensive after a little while. Mm -hmm. So you guys think this is gonna come off? Absolutely. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. Let's will it off. We should. Come off. Come off. Come on. Dan, you want to say anything about your experiences with this, or you want to start I've wiggling had, it? I don't I've know. I've had nothing for everybody. Good experiences. <laughs> okay. I've had some charring on one that took too long, but yeah. you don't see it. Had some what? Some Strong. charring of the wood down in there. Has that been your only side oh. effect that you've, you've seen from it? Well, what did we yeah. do? When that we first came with the bent road, we pulled six of them, didn't we? It was a bunch of them. Yeah. 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 That's great. Like I said, the first one I did, you know, like it just, it washed over me all of the all of the struggles. All of the, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. all of the neck resets with steam were, you know, it just was, you know, because, you know, like the fin, you know, like especially the older, the older the instruments get, the finish is just so, you know, so delicate. So, you know, like it, everybody wants it perfect, and so it can it can take a long time to, to pull a neck on a on a vintage guitar if, if you're not willing to accept, you know, cracked heels and all that kind of good stuff. Let's see what we're doing here. So we're doing this in front of everybody. <laughs> so how hot are we now? What are we running to? So let's let's say in the, that it's going to be three three thirteen. I don't know what that. Okay. It seems pretty uncomfortable right now. So when it goes, does it just go? Oof. Softly, and then all the clamping 
kind of becomes irrelevant or uh, so once this once this releases it'll like I'll just see like it, it's just popped up just a little bit it's only going to go up as far as the tension is pushing it up these clamps will probably probably stay in place I don't know can you feel any heat on the heel? you can and uh, so when I first went up with uh, to do one with Alex who has iron horse up in uh, Rockland County, New York. Uh, we actually got a um, laser thermometer when we were reading reading the back of the hill. Absolutely, come everybody, come uh, kind of give a little. Do you have any issues with the top separating from the sides? I mean, I mean, I've had that with Steve. Uh, yeah, I have. I haven't had. I haven't had the issues. Now, does it ever? When you when you have that tension on a heel, I mean, have you been just doing something and have to while you're not there? Not not pop off. No, mostly, especially at the white blue, what you'll get is kind of what I call laffy tapping off. Like it'll just kind of just start stretching, start the, up stretching the glue, uh -huh. and it'll just you know fail like you know like you're pulling taffy. Okay. <laughs> It's not too much now. Like it's, it's, it's going to take a while. How you, you get along with enough? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> okay. Well, do you want to talk about steam while we're not while we're waiting? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, just briefly. So, Steamac sold the uh, the hose and the needle for years. I think we're still doing. And that's where I always got it. You basically just go down to. Goodwill and get like the dollar uh, espresso maker that has the okay. the thing for making steam and mm -hmm. I'm not sure what that's called. It's like called when you introduce steam and make your, 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 your cappuccino. So anyway, you put the hose on the you put the hose on the pot and turn the pot on and it starts making it starts making steam. And you just direct the little hose the direction you want it to go. Some people will put separators in there because you'll get a lot of moisture. You know, you'll get it'll just all of a sudden shoot a bunch of water through. Uh -huh. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes the separator will get it. Sometimes it won't. Um, but like, you know, the the problem with no, just the main problem with steam is you've got you know all this end grain from right. from the wood, and you're introducing water. You're in addition to attacking the glue, you're swelling the joint. You're actually mm -hmm. swelling that wood. I mean, it seems yeah, like it almost would always blow the finish off the heel with moisture coming out to the surface. I, I've had finish come off of heels before that I'm I'm sure is just from swelling, mm -hmm. just from from it taking up all the all the water into the in grain. Those big Gibson heels, they can actually curl. They right? can curl. Mm -hmm. So the other thing too is when you're dealing with Guilds and Gibsons that have laminated necks, that's another issue because you get you can actually get steam going up the truss rod uh, truss rod cavity. And it'll just it'll separate the laminations of the of the net. You know, so like you can imagine like any of that steam is just gonna like it's just gonna go wherever wherever it wants. You carry a lot of errors and emissions in shorts when you yeah. do that. I had a friend at, at Gruns, he, he uh, was doing a a Gretsch and he was steaming a Gretsch neck off and it actually blew the truss rod cover off. Like he was sitting there <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, oh, oh. like he was sitting there, you know, like I think he'd only been working there for a week, and all of a sudden his <laughs> head starts turned into a tea kettle. <laughs> Just a week. With, like when I when I steam a neck off, I'm having to wait, you know, three four days for the thing to dry. Yeah. And work back under climate. How long do you wait? Well, I um, mean, do you have to wait, or do you just move forward? You know, I think on white glue, because you're, I'm I'm still putting water in there on on high glue, and I would still wait. I would probably wait a day. You know, like I don't use high glue, so I'm not. A, it's like I'm from a manufacturer standpoint. So using high glue. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I mean, like I would still. Anytime you introduce moisture, I would. I would still wait. But you know, on this one, I might start working it almost immediately because hmm. I, I just don't think it's. I don't think it's changing it that much. Um, I didn't bring a pallet knife, and I'm. I'm starting to suspect that maybe the fingerboard extension. Readhesed a little bit or something. On a guild where there's finish over the heel, do you do any scribe around that before? Yeah, I do. Yeah. No, I'm good. I see any slides. I can't actually even really see. It's moving. It's moving back and forth. I don't think it's attached. I'm going to hold to the table. No, I think it's. Off center, 
you modified that next uh, I did, yeah. yeah. I like I like the speed of the quick grips and I also uh, the aluminum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I've, I've uh, stripped out, like <laughs> everyone I've owned, I've stripped out the, uh, uh, the threads on the thumb mm -hmm. screw. And that bar, the original bar will bend down. It'll bend down or it's a little flat, which is actually a good thing. I mean, I can crush that heel with those, with those wing nuts and that uh, square stock. Mm -hmm. yeah. So like, it's, it's something to think about. Can you tell us more about your kung fu method on the others? Uh, so the rigid oscillating mm -hmm. oscillating saw, just cut the, you know, like on cheap guitars, I'll mm -hmm. just cut the uh, the heel drywall screw and okay. you know, elapsed time twenty minutes. Okay. So it's a good way to take a you know hundred dollar guitar and make it functional. Make it playable. Well, most most hundred dollar guitars are pretty functional these days. So. And where do you does put the saw? I don't know. What's that? Where do you put the saw? Like right on the heel. Oh, right. So there. like, yeah, like on any of the like the, you know, foreign made guitars that are just cheap or throwaway or mm -hmm. whatever. So oscillating saw just does does that thing. Mm -hmm. Just come in here and cut, and cut, and then, you know, mm -hmm. I'll even drag sandpaper. I'll like break the joint and then drag sandpaper until I get the angle mm -hmm. I want. And then throw a drywall screw, or a duck screw. So you're not cutting, to, you're using like a fine saw, one of those reciprocating yeah, saws yeah. that you can just work in there like a surgeon yeah. with it. And it, it works really well. Uh, I so use you're it not removing, you're just removing stuff from the back yeah. and then pulling it down? Yeah, I won't even take the strings off to do it. How deep do you cut it? <laughs> all the way, all the way through. Oh, you're cutting the hole. Yeah, oh, all the okay. way through. You're just doing it for bone saw. Yeah, absolutely. Bone mm -hmm. surgeon's yeah. bone saw. Yeah, <laughs> that's what they use. I think I got it. <coughs> and why not pull well, the neck I missed the beginning. Oh, because it's it's just it's so much time. <laughs> on, on a on an exit like this in our shop, we get just a little bit under five hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay. That's before any fret work. Or anything. That's before any any fret work or any. But it's good practice if you're learning. Well, to get in there with some of the import stuff, they're using like an epoxy type glue on. It's almost impossible. Yeah, I saw Ray Maddy do this. He would have known what parts I pulled in Brooklyn in the 60s. And he went to the claim and made it. I finished it. This isn't stripping at all. Is that nothing to do with steam? Yeah. I think I had a left hand at all off the line. So they were thin veneer until they had the gaps. And I was like, oh my god. I didn't know I was selling them again. Thank you. Play. It is just a little bit, yeah. I guess my question was when once it pops, does that whole thing fall apart and all the clamps go everywhere? No. Okay, it, it'll probably just get up to a certain point. I, I might have to pull the, the pencil out of here. Sometimes the the, uh, the probe will actually foul the the joint moving, so it'll actually kind of lock up the lock up the joint a little bit. So here in a little bit, I'll pull it out and give it another wiggle. Because you really don't know you have the joint, do you? I I'm satisfied with this. When I drilled that, it, like it gave that oh, you felt that, that quintessential like you know, <coughs> drilling and letting go. Yeah. So another thing to think about on this too is you know the economics of neck resets. When I said I get slightly under under five hundred dollars for a neck reset. The neck reset has changed, you know, like in, in my life, <coughs> you know, we're doing fingerboard extension shims now. I'm painting my fingerboard extension shims to make it look like they aren't there. You know, I'm you know, fitting the dovetail to where it'll hold string tension. You know, in the old days guys would do business cards and stuff like that. Um, you know, four fifty 500 bucks for a neck reset versus a couple refrets that I can bang up. Mm -hmm. Like this this job is becoming less and less profitable is what I'm saying. And every little, you know, the eighth inch hole versus, you know, the potential for finish damage or the potential for it taking five hours to pull the neck or three hours to pull the neck. You just don't have that time in the economics of a neck reset in a in a shop. It's just it becomes a money loser as soon as you as soon as you spend over an hour pulling the neck. 
because you got so much time into the into the remainder of it. But if you have to do any touch up, you sort of lost your day. You've lost your day. Yeah, yeah. You you maybe have lost your spirit. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> like every, like every time you you know every time the paintbrushes come out, it it, it takes a little <laughs> it takes a little bit more away from me. So. <laughs> And what do you use to fill this hole like black PA and sand it or? Uh, yeah, so I'll plug it. I'll plug it with wood, I'll plug it with epoxy putty, I'll plug it with, uh, I won't use CA. Okay. Because it has a, has a different sheen. Okay. Um, but I'm starting to smell really good. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> So I'm going to give it five more minutes. I'm going to pull the probe and see if the probe is actually hanging it up. Okay. You don't want to lay. You do it on the lay. I'm sorry? You never can't hmm? score it. You can do it on the lay and then silver solder a, a thin wire. I put them on the lay, but by the time I got small enough, it just starts to fall apart. Sorry. Oh, did it? No, I wouldn't turn it smaller. I would take another wire and silver solder it into the, the existing one. Smaller. Drill it. Take that tip, put it in the lake. Like short of it. And now you fill it out all the time. Yeah. There might have been one at the uh, auditorium. Yeah, it's moving. Alright. Copper line. Do I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk. So if we can see <laughs> inside of there, where's that probe? You know, here's here's the okay, the mortise and the tendon. I mean, where's that probe? Does it have to get right in that space between them? It's right in the space between them. What happens if it misses by an eighth of an inch? So Alex told me he did one here recently where he missed it by probably an eighth of an inch. Just sunk it right directly into the neck block. It was on mm -hmm. some forget what it was. It was an off off brand guitar. It wasn't like a normal Martin or Gibson. And he said it's still released. Mm -hmm. I found one. And it, what? I was just saying when I found one I'm drilling the hole for it. Going a little bit and just start moving around yep. until I find a spot where it's Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. So you can feel just like missing the stud yeah. of the sheetrock. Yeah, right? yeah. You can tell when you're yeah. in the right place. Is it really touching anything there or just hanging in open space? It's it's probably touching a little bit. So eighth inch you know, like it's probably got like a little bit on either side. It's probably got a little bit on the block and a little bit on the neck. It's been, it's it's been, been around charring. It. It's probably going to be trying on this. This is taking longer than longer than normal. Because everyone's watching. That's right. That's right. That's so when he chars, when he chars, do you do anything to that wood with like CA glue to make it? Stiff again, or because you've weakened, you've kind of destroyed that process. You know, it's, 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 so, it's so minute, yeah, okay. it's really like nothing to worry about. Yeah, it's he, he to make you feel better. Steve Kovacic did, did a uh, steam demonstration mm -hmm. four or six years, some point, years ago. Same thing, same thing. <laughs> apart. Locked up. <laughs> well, um, I, you feel worse. I almost packed my palette knife. I have a, a, a good cake decorating knife, but it needs to go. They have them at the student oh, table down there. Hmm? You guys have them at the student table down there. Yeah. <laughs> is this one of your customers' guitars? Uh, this is my this is my boss's guitar. Want me to go get some pellets? Okay. <laughs> Would it be worth playing with the paper under to see if yeah, just find it? Try the tape, sir. Yeah, it's moving a lot. Yeah, it's moving. It's moving. a It's some of that Martin White glue is, is tougher than others. I'm not actually even sure what, what year this is. Is it possible somebody else re glued it or something? Actually, this is new old stock. This was hanging on somebody's wall brand new. Mm. And it just, uh, Buzzy just got it. What year is that? So it's serial number 300 something. So.
So you can see now we're starting to get a gap up here at the at the fingerboard extension. Uh, come around and take a look. Put it right. And we would all stand around and somebody would catch it. <laughs> 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 that's why I was asking if everything, because then all the clamps would fall apart because it was all very easy. Yeah, it was. Sure yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I was doing a D1220 at, uh, at Gruen's, and, and uh, I had just had I had, had a problem with this, and I was like, okay, I'm going to go back and just wiggling it off. and. Uh, I had it up and I was just given like the back of the heel like a little pop like that and all of a sudden the headstock had shattered from here to here, came off, hit me on the back of the head, came off the back of my head, hit me on the butt. Perfect. <laughs> Repair shop full, you know, like there was like eight guys working in that shop so and I didn't hear at the end of that for a while. <laughs> it wasn't, it was, it was like some kind of mineral fault line on the guitar too. There was like where it cracked, mm. there was like this weird... How long did you throw that excuse? Just out of curiosity. My excuses are instantaneous. It was perfect. I just brought a maple guitar down, and when I was I was just biking, you know, the, the thickness of it, and I'm like, oh boy, and it slipped, and I went like this to grab the back, and it split, and just but two pieces. <laughs> it's almost two pieces. Luckily, it was wide enough to uh, put back together. But <laughs> There's Kyle. Oh, yeah. There we go. Do we do repairs, but we like to watch others do repairs. Yeah. Yeah. Like watching them. So you say those threads strip or the nut strip? Yeah, the uh, on the aluminum ones, they have a tendency to to. Like like that pressure you're putting on there it tends to ruin the bolts. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. saying the bolts were only <coughs> no, the, the bar the bar the the bar 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 the yeah. Oh, I am always worried about it. Your boss's guitar lumber factory is costly. No, I, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm so high, high warrior right now, it's very really funny. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There's the tax. You made it all the way through without the panic attack. I am very rushed. That was good. Hey, people wondering how this how this fit in here. And you can see the, it looks like my my bit wandered. That's probably why it took uh, it took so long. The, the truss rod or the steel reinforcement grabbed my bit and threw it threw it sideways. Fairly warm. Can I see that before the picture? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, do you want to hold the neck up like this? Ian, yeah. you hold it up like this. Smile, man, you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be happy now. We're all watching. Panic attack. Yeah. 
So that's that's dry. It's kind of glued. It's nice. warm. It's it's off. It's dry. It's yellow. It's Did I hear clapping? Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm, I'm going. I'm going south of the three hundred. Like two, two eighty, two ninety. Two eighty. Yeah. Two eighty. 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 Two eighty.